This is one of my favorite interviews to discuss with scientists. It's Dr. Paul Offit, and he's doing a live network television interview about vaccines. So he has an audience of millions of people at home. This interview takes place over the course of just three minutes. He's only asked a very small handful of questions, so he has a very limited opportunity to get his messages across to this audience. It's also pegged to the retraction of a deeply flawed scientific article in The Lancet that had falsely and inaccurately linked vaccines to autism. So this is a challenging interview. I think Dr. Offit really just hits the ball out of the park with this interview, and I want to stop the interview as we go through it to just offer a little bit of commentary to point out some good things that he's doing. Dr. Paul Offit is Chief of Infectious Diseases at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. He is also author of the book Autism's False Prophets. Good morning, Dr. Offit. Good morning. You've been a longtime proponent of vaccines, maintained that they do not cause autism for a long time. Do you believe this reversal by The Lancet will finally put an end to that debate? Well, I hope so. I mean, it's certainly a long time in coming. Uh, the paper obviously was, was critically flawed. It, it should have never been published. And, and science uh, done since then has clearly shown that, that the MMR vaccine didn't cause autism. The problem was is it started a firestorm. Hundreds of children in the United Kingdom and Ireland were hospitalized. Four children were killed by measles virus, a virus could have been, that could have been safely and easily prevented by vaccinations. This retraction will not uh, give those children their lives back, but hopefully it will save other children children for, from succumbing to this uh, completely preventable infection. So this was a really good answer. The question that he was hit with was, do you think this will just put an end to the controversy? And a literal answer to that might be no. The controversy will continue despite the retraction of this one notoriously flawed article. But instead, what Dr. Offit talks about is his aspirations and what he hopes that mainstream audience, those millions of people watching at home, will take away from it. The children who have lost their lives as a result of this misinformation, they can't get their lives back. But going forward, he wants the people who are watching at home to understand that vaccines are safe, that these diseases are preventable, and that they, they should get their kids vaccinated. You've gone as far as saying, Dr. Offit, that the editors of The Lancet should be held responsible for the deaths of those children that weren't vaccinated? Well, I think there are a lot of people who, who should be held responsible here, obviously. This is a great answer. I love how he starts this answer off because he doesn't want to spend this very short amount of time that he's going to be on television just talking about the editors, right? So there's a lot of people who are going to be held responsible, according to Dr. Offit. The, those who, who, uh, who, the authors of the paper, um, were shown by the General Medical Council to have acted un unethically, and, and, and the journal uh, withdrew the paper in part because they felt that the data had been falsified or misrepresented. I think that the editor should be held accountable. Four, four of the six people who reviewed that paper recommended that it be rejected, yet still it was published. I think the media, you jumped on this paper as if it was fact, when I think, you know, you could argue, I think as Carl Sagan has, that ex extraordinary claims should be backed by extraordinary evidence. This was an extraordinary claim that was backed by virtually no evidence and obviously has never been reproduced. Okay, boom, great answer there. And it, there's not a lot of times that I would recommend criticizing the media while you're doing a big interview. I think Dr. Offit has the goods here based on how the vaccine story had been covered up and until that point. And of course, he name checks Dr. Carl Sagan, which is always a great science communication bonus point. But what he really does is he uses that Sagan quote to illustrate this really important broad point, right, which is extraordinary out there claims, things that seem maybe too good to be true or too hard to believe. They require an extra level of evidence. People at home don't believe everything you hear in the media about these scientific topics. Trust reliable sources of science and trust robust science, especially when it comes to your children's health. Well, but it's hard to argue with parents who are so convinced that their child took a dramatic turn after receiving the vaccine, and they are absolutely convinced, no matter what The Lancet says now, that a vaccine caused their child's autism. What do you say to them? Yeah, I, I think I can certainly understand where they're coming from. Their child was fine, they got a vaccine, and then they weren't fine anymore. Could the vaccine have caused it? That's, that's a question that fortunately can be addressed in a scientific venue. Mm. You know, you look at hundreds of thousands of children that did or didn't receive MMR vaccine to see whether the instance of autism was greater in the vaccinated group, and it wasn't. You know? So again, this is a really good answer because he starts off from the premise of sympathy and empathy with parents, right? He can understand how people were misled, particularly by this study. He lays out what the science says, and he knows that just saying, here's what the science says, it's not enough. So he has an illustrative story, 
And it's a story that he's told many, 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 many times. It's a very practiced story, and he tells it very quickly. I, the story that I tell, because it's a, it's a, it's a good one, you know, my wife's in private practice pediatrics. She came into her office one day. She was pulling up uh, into a syringe a vaccine. A four-month-old was sitting on her mother's lap uh, uh, at, waiting for the, for the vaccine, and the child had a seizure. She had a seizure while my wife was pulling that vaccine up into a syringe. If that vaccine had given, been given five minutes earlier, I think there's no amount of statistical data in the world that would have convinced that mother otherwise, and it's understandable. But Okay, so great story. He got his story in. You just hear the interviewers start to interrupt him to wrap things up because the segment's over. So now Dr. Offit hears that and he knows I've got one last chance to give one takeaway message to this huge audience I'm talking to right now. Uh, but these are scientific questions that can be answered. They have been answered. I, I would only plea with parents you know, to believe the science that clearly has exonerated vaccines here. All right, Dr. Paul Offit, thank you so much. Th thank you. And you all right, so I think Dr. Offit just does a really excellent job here. There, there's not a lot he could have done differently. I think he answered the question skillfully. I think he connected with the mainstream audience. And again, this is three minutes. This is a really challenging interview. And he's able to get that message about trusting and verifiable science and in knowing that it's safe to vaccinate your kids. He gets that message in several times. Uh, it's really important. So every time he was hit with one of those questions, he could have easily gone down some different path, some weird rabbit hole, and then, oh, the interview's over and you haven't gotten your main messages across. Uh, he's a pro at this. He knows how to give a good interview, and he is a very clear, credible, trustworthy scientific messenger. So bravo, Dr. Offit.